Hey everybody, so I want to do a quick little review here on this new flight controller that I just got. And uh, it's a F3 flight controller with an OSD built in, as well as um, 8 megabytes of uh, black box flash data. So this is a pretty good all-in-one, especially for you guys that do a lot of um, uh, micro minimum OSD uh, configurations and soldering having this built into the board is going to uh, be a lot more convenient because there's less it's, it makes for a cleaner build without a lot bunch of wires going back and forth between the uh, flight controller the camera and the vtx so it's all built in here and in fact the camera and um uh, vtx go right here the video in ground and video out in the ground right there and we see here there's the uh there's the max uh 7456 chip there that's for the video a um, couple of things to note about this board, it uses the um, SP Racing F3 target. So it came flashed with Clean Flight, I believe 112, and I was pretty uh, uh, quickly upgraded that to Betaflight 291, and it was pretty easy to do that. The only you know, major downside of this board is that there's no, as you can see, there's no USB ports. So it's all of these JSD connectors. So. What they do provide is um, a USB to TTL adapter here, which is basically an FT FTDI adapter. And you'll need to solder on some uh, of these right angle pins here. It also comes with pin headers for your motor outputs if you want to use those. I um, already had one of these USB TTL adapters. It's just got a CP210 uh, chip on it. And uh, the, these wires here are included uh, with the kit. And these are yes, these are pretty nice wires. They're, they're silicon. And so if you're ever going to solder these, these are the ones you want to get, even though they are pretty thin. Um, so there's going to be two places that you're going to plug this in. And it's going to be down here. For the USB, um, this is for the flight, uh, basically for the flight controller. If you want to flash beta flight or clean flight and do configuration, and then uh, you can also use this to um, configure and uh, install your micro minimum OSD software. So I, I found out while, while configuring this that there was um, no firmware flash down there. So you need to uh, download the MW OSD, uh, I, ha I got the version 1.6, but I think 1.5 will work as well. You will need to um, use Arduino to flash uh, that firmware to the chip here. And it's just an Atmel chip, just like, just like any other uh, micro minimum OSD, it makes uh, really no difference. And uh, so you just be aware that you have to uh, flash the firmware and configure it. Uh, you, you would flash it with Arduino and then configure it with the um, MWOSD GUI that comes with the uh, firmware. Um, those of you who are already familiar with my um, minimum OSDs, this is uh, totally exactly the same. The only difference is that the circuitry is in, in, is in, in integrated into the into the flight controller. So, so for these other uh, ports here, you it does come with the cables for those as well. Uh, get the Three of those is for uh, these three ports right here. And I believe one of them is for the serial RX receiver for the, I believe it's UART3. But if you want to directly solder your receiver, I believe UART2 is available here with these pin headers here. So you could also directly solder your um, receiver to the, the board if you don't want to use the uh, micro JSD connectors. And that's probably what I'm going to do. So here in the back, we all see our, our output pins for ESDs. We also have um, uh, pins here for our buzzer and also for our battery voltage. So the uh, the nice thing about this is that it's only cost about $25. Uh, it's not that much more than a standard um, F3 racing board, but then it comes with the built-in OSD, which I believe usually costs about seven or eight dollars, sometimes as much as ten dollars. So um, for the additional cost and the built-in integration, I thought I thought it was worth it. I'm gonna give it a try. Um, I'm not sure which build I'm gonna be putting it in, but uh, if 
you stay tuned to my channel and uh, you'll find out which build I'm going to put it in. Maybe either put the QABX or maybe one of the smaller ones. The fact that it's so compact and has less wiring, it's going to be a good for one of these tighter builds anyway. So, so anyway guys, I hope you liked this little video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the um, comment section below. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.